So Tom Lee comes out and basically says 40% rally in the Russell. It's rotation, trust me. And I would have to say the man has gotten it right quite some time. But we're going to dissect whether he is just basing it off of his I was right before and I'm going to be right now. Or is there some substance behind what he is saying? He's saying small caps are breaking out and will rally 40% as S&P sputters. So the question is, is everyone going to have that bullish mentality in the markets for the S&P, for the NASDAQ, if your golden children are not the crown? If they're not the center of attention, are they going to be the ones that keep the market going? He cites could rally, emphasis on the word could, amid a shift in Fed policy, Fundstrat Tom Lee told CNBC, and the rotation of large caps will be evident in August. I don't know how much more rotation we want to have in the market. We'll get into that in just a second. But I do want to touch base on the Fed policy because we had a slurry of Fed speakers today, and what they said was very, very interesting. Well, we got Waller coming out and props to this guy. He just basically said the silent part out loud. And that is the exact timing of rate cut doesn't matter a lot. I think the market would disagree with you a lot because they have spun themselves into a frenzy thinking about rate cuts. And my God, I thought the bears were dumb. And I'm starting to question my sanity of which team is crazier because as we covered in the weekend deep dive, the net speculative positions came out and I was like, you guys, you're just going to get wrecked. Um, we also had building permits come out today better than expected. So again, this narrative that the housing market is going to cool off, that shelter inflation is going to cool down. I'm starting to question if the narrative is going to change. And even speaking of the narrative, uh, we do have one of the Fed members also saying about the narrative. And let me just find that for you, ladies and gentlemen, real quick. Ah, here. Uh, no single 25 basis point interest rate cut matters. Only way or one way or the other. The issue is when to change the narrative. Well, I wouldn't say you're giving the market a whole lot of confidence there, and we can actually reflect on what happened today. Russell having a pretty rough a day out there, actually down 1%. So, Tom, I thought this was rotation. Where are we rotating to? And my question is to you, if the Russell is red, if the NASDAQ is basically cratering, and the S&P is fl a fluttering, like you said, the Dow only being up 0.5% is not a massive rotation. What we saw when this thing happened, where we saw the Russell just basically go to Boomtown, I would argue with you that, yes, that is rotation. And we covered that in the week in Deep Dive, ladies and gentlemen. Link down in the description below for that if you want to check it out. We're going to be talking about the levels in there and why they're important, not necessarily in this video. So make sure you guys check that out. And while you guys are down there, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and having bell notifications on. We will be going live today to cover Netflix earnings. I will be giving you a play for Netflix as I promised where you can do it or you can't. We'll be talking about some of the risks, some of the things I'm seeing that I'm not liking, but I'm also talking about meme reversion in it. But before we get into that, if it wasn't bad enough that Tom Lee's coming out, the bulls are basically lost in space. The fear and greed is sitting right at neutral where either team has an advantage, and I'm definitely certain that the bears are shorting the living, you know what, out of the market. And speaking of the market, um, well, it's just, it's not healthy, guys. It's not healthy in any way, shape, or form, because here's your warning sign on the S&P. And this is bad enough that you had two consecutive weekly breakouts and then a failed breakout, right? Previous week, failed breakout, boom, crap. And now we're going to have a second consecutive weekly breakout and crap. So now the week is still young. Netflix can easily turn this around on earnings. And why will be betting bullish? Because meme reversion. But this is an early morning sign that things are not going our way. Below the nine, below the rotationary previous point, closing at the low for the S&P. The only one level matters now, and that is 454.19 on the S&P. That breaks we're going kaput. And I do not mean 
in a hurry to the upside, I mean in a hurry to the downside, because at that point, the 50 day moving average starts becoming in play and we started looking at lower levels. That's approximately two and a half percent. So that would be a mild correction, right? Mild being 5% correction from all time highs. So it's not truly, truly bearish, right? But it is going to be one of those buy the dip moments possibly. And maybe the bulls step up there, or maybe they don't. Maybe we start breaking some more toys as we come down there. We would maybe finally fill this gap that's been back here. But then again, I'm not gonna dive into all the gaps before I digress. The NASDAQ, on the other hand, uh, wow, this is not good at all. Uh, first of all, you didn't make it even to a new all-time high. Uh, it's really looking like head and shoulders right now. So even if we get that bounce, right, let's say we bounce here, bang our head on previous support, becomes resistance and head lower, kind of seeing that. But it's a very obvious pattern, so I don't necessarily know if it's going to play out. Uh, we had the warning sign yesterday where we basically defended, rotated, but didn't manage to hold the rotation point completely on close and today just crapped almost three percent on the uh, nasdaq we actually gapped below all forms of support we did not even get any form of support 486.86 the level i said on the weekend deep dive that you should not violate in any way shape or form and you cannot start talking being bearish until you violate said level well congratulations bears you have violated that level to no end and the question is where is our next bounce point and simply put it there's a couple right uh, we can look at 476.26 being the bounce point we can also look at basically 473.82 being the bounce point but notice how all these numbers are nowhere near where you are now so you're looking at least in my opinion approximately one to one and a half percent more on the nasdaq that going into netflix earnings will be beneficial because of meme reversion if everyone's selling off everything and then everyone looks if netflix has good earnings and they're like oh fomo time and then piles into netflix piles and back into tech stocks piles more money into it as people have been piling in money into all the golden boys the 50 would be a reasonable bounce point in the NASDAQ and an excellent buying opportunity if we get down there. And also the VIX, right? The VIX looking like I said, hey, it's looking, once it's touching this 50, like it's going to do something. And we're starting to have it come back to life. Is this going to be the extent of what the VIX is going to do? I don't know. But I will toot my own horn of telling you, I warned you about Bitcoin. Until you got back above that 50, it faked you guys out like no tomorrow, right? We actually got one candle close. You know what I say on the channel, two candles of close is required failed yesterday failing right now however we are in a region that it didn't fail too bad so again all the bitcoin bears uh don't get your hopes up too much yet uh all the bitcoin bulls you still got a chance here so make sure you guys before you go to the angry comments down below uh just calm it down and just see where this goes, right? Right now we're in limbo state. We're going to see where this goes. Definitely could be looking at 70,000 on Bitcoin if it breaks the 50 or looking at 52. Pretty wide range there. Looking for that gap fill, breaking a 56 and heading to 52 would be my thesis just because. But I also see the inverted head and shoulders that's forming there for all those that don't see it. Left shoulder, head right shoulder break to the upside bullish on bitcoin especially if we get this 40 percent rally on the russell right and just to put into perspective before we jump to netflix which will be the final topic uh for us oil 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 looking like it still wants to head higher and this is going to be a little concerning for tommy's thesis because energy was one of the big things that was pushing us up and pushing the everything down in inflation. So if you were to get that 40% rally, just to put in perspective, uh, that would put you at almost 32, uh, sorry, 320 on the Russell. That would be absolutely insane. That would be bonkers crazy, 30% rally from all-time highs on the Russell. I personally would love to see it. I've been saying the Russell is going to be the one that basically pushes the highest in all of the indexes especially once it catches a bounce now are we this going to be the bounce is this a fake out again we talk about the inverted yield curve to our blue in the face it's starting to look like it maybe wants to invert doesn't really know what it's doing i'll keep you guys updated of it but enough talking about yield curve enough talking about netflix enough talking about everything let's start actually talking about netflix and why is netflix important well they got earnings today so we're going to be looking at earnings play we're going to be looking at what the option is pricing is going to be 
and then we're gonna be looking at what we're gonna be doing. But before we get into that, I do have one last digression to get to, and that is President Biden actually tests positive for COVID, and the stock market is like, we don't care. So enough about that, and back to your regular scheduled programming on Netflix. Right now, sitting around that 64, we are below the 50-day moving average. This is one of the things that I'm going to say you got to pay attention to. And that is going to be, are you going to be above the 50 for this option play? And I'm going to give you both the bull and the bear thesis. We're going to be looking at IV in just a moment. But first of all, if you're above the 50 going into the last hour of the day, I personally be looking to play it bullish. If you're looking to have meme reversion, if you're not significantly down, I will be looking to that. If you crater it into the sense of you violate 640 like no tomorrow to, uh, going into earnings, I would not recommend playing the bullish side. I may take a stab at the bearish side, but then it goes against my strategy and thus why I will not be doing it. What is that strategy? Well, simply put, I take a look at this expectation right here, 25 to 4. I'm looking at bullish on Netflix expected to beat and that revenue could be beaten by quite a big amount, especially with how people are just crammed at home and not really doing much. Netflix subscriptions could see a growth there. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but I'm looking at this 25 to four, pretty good betting odds. So the same thing about Wells Fargo and then the subsequent day it went up. However, this is a Thursday into Friday earnings play. So make sure you guys understand that appropriate risk. And enough about the charts, let's dive in to the IV and the options trade. So looking at the Netflix option IV here, we can clearly see the IV is cranked up to no tomorrow, as expected on our earnings, and it's gonna fall off a cliff. So this is one of those scenarios where if you got a large enough account, selling puts on Netflix wouldn't be an absolutely insane idea. You do need 64 grand to do it. That is why I'm basically saying looking at spreads is probably the way to go if you're low on capital and want to play it. So let's dive in to the expected move. Absolutely massive move. As you can see, a 5 and 96 being the low and all the way to 700. And again, that number is going to be psychologically important. So it's going to allow us to make a pretty massive spread on this. So the implied volatility is expecting a bonkers move out of this, and we should expect some IV contraction. So if we actually jump back over to the chart, I just want to put into perspective, uh, 700 would only be about, let's say 10, that would be 8% to the upside. 595 would be about 8%. So it's about an expected 10% move. So if you were looking to sell options, you probably may be looking at a drop of 15%, right? 15% will put you around the territory of the 550s. And if we jump back over to the program, right? We can see that 550 option premium for selling puts is about a dollar, right? So a dollar, not the greatest return on capital, but still in that range that, hey, if you're looking to sell IV for one single day, that is the way uh, maybe to go. If we look at some of the open interest, right, to see what the market is doing, we've got some levels around that 600 number, but not a lot there. If we look on the open interest side of the calls, still a ranging split of variation, again, 700 having the largest volume. So for option pricing, if the stock decides to run up, it's going to have market makers basically be buying this thing like tomorrow. But let's see what we can do for the options, right? Let's target around the 40 delta. That's what I like to do for earnings. So 670, right? And where is 670 on the chart? And that's simply put, 670 is right around the nine day moving average. It's in an area that we should be able to easily get back above if we're gonna be going and gapping and going. That's not a huge move. And then we can spread the spread for lack of a term, pun not intended, as we see fit. And then we'll get into the bearish play afterwards. But let's say we're going to buy the 670 call. That would be approximately $1,900 if we were just to buy the call. So we want to offset it at least $10 would be what I ideally would want to do. So we would sell the 680 call. 
this would be $300 in total. Now, you can actually make this a $5 wide spread. You can make this almost a $2 wide spread. It's going to result in similar things. Your max profit, max loss is going to be basically a one-to-one -one ratio. The narrower the spread goes, the wider it is, it's going to result in more of a two-to-one. So personally, I would be playing the 670-680 spread here. That is not crazy for Netflix to do. 680, going back to the chart real quick here, we can clearly see that 680 would put it not in a previous, it would not a new all-time high. It would be a previous area that we were transacting in, and that's six to seven percent. So 680, right? Let's say we get there, we're looking at five percent. Five percent move on Netflix is not out of the question if it has a good earnings as everyone is expecting, and that would put it at a nice price point. So again, going back to this $300 risk, $700 reward, that is what I will be personally looking to play for this option chain. I'm actually going to set an order in here just so to remind myself at a very, very low number. So that way I can remember, hey, dummy, set this order when you go. So that's to show you guys I'm actually going to be looking at this order. And that's what I personally will be playing $300. You can maybe do the like we said, the 670 sell the 675 option, that's about $232 and not a lot of option pricing there. So it's not really worth it until you start getting into that territory of six, maybe make it 677.5, but really you need $300 for this play. You're not looking necessarily, you don't necessarily want to even go out too wide, right? So you don't want to be going and buying like a 690 and selling the 700 that's gonna yes yeah, still three hundred dollars as you can see here and the max profit probability is not there the cheapest you can possibly get is 150 dollars but then again your risk rewards skewed so again with netflix being a larger cap stock price point right it is going to be a little more expensive but let's say you want to play to the downside right look how much upside optimization there is in this and that's why i'm saying meme reversion here if you're looking at the downside, we're going to set it up the exact same way. It's going to be a little more expensive for us, right? So buying the 640 and really we want to be starting the 630 just because we're getting into an area where there's not a lot of liquidity per se comparative to the call side. And then it, the pricing, it just gets wonky on us. So first of all, for the put side, as you can see here, we're in increments of five, not 2.5. So that's already telling me, hey, it's already going to be expensive. And just to flip this on us, yeah, buy, buy the and sell that. Um, as we can see here, it's already being not favorable in the risk to reward. If we sell out, let's say to a further point, still two to one, this is not a good setup in my opinion. Even if we move, let's say the uh, underlying that we're buying up, as we can see here, it just gets really, really wonky where we're able to set up a 635 to 630. It's decent pricing for profit. If you were looking to play that downside potential, possibly doing 635, 630, that pricing is not absolutely outrageous. But then when you get further on, it just completely melts away. Now, this is being recorded outside option trading hours. So the bids and ask are going to be a little bit wonky. So make sure you guys keep an eye on that. I'm just basing it off of what people are expecting uh, for the pricing that is being presented. So again, keeping that $5 with would be my recommendation for the downside again kind of look at what you would expect from the downside targeting that 40 to 30 deltas um, wings for your buying and selling again why i don't like the downside is number one you're not seeing more potential to the downside meaning the market is expecting an upwards move on top of the pricing is significantly more favorable to the upside and also analyst expectations are blanketly moving to the upside, staying in that upper region. So if we sum it all up, you have extremely high IV, meaning you're gonna have an explosive move. And thus a lot of people are gonna be selling that put site and not wanting to basically pay them out. Market makers are gonna be like, it's cheaper to pay out the call side because we can just buy the stock and have, sell it to you for a higher price. So that for them, it just makes more sense to do that rather than paying the premium out. So going back to the chart here, we can see if you're above 650 tomorrow, I definitely be looking to, as a buying opportunity, I may even buy Netflix if the market's down 
on open that option call, just put it an order in for it so that it executes and I have it on the trade. However, again, we're gonna keep in mind that one could be an interesting play that we could be playing out. I'll be looking into it on market open and I will keep you guys appraised of it in the Discord below. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time and I hope to see you in the live stream tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you again.